Hey folks, before we dive into today's stories, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more and longer stories. Let's enjoy. The dark web people took my mom away from me. I never thought I'd be sharing something like this online, but I need to get it off my chest. Maybe it's some twisted attempt to find closure, or maybe it's just a desperate scream into the void. Whatever the reason, I hope my story serves as a warning to anyone considering venturing into the dark web. It's not some playground where you can explore for kicks. It's a fucking nightmare that ruined my life, and it's all my fault. I was 15 when I first heard about the dark web. My friends at school would talk about it in hushed tones, like it was some forbidden secret. It started as a joke, you know. We dare each other to check it out, see who had the guts to actually go there. I was curious. Curiosity is a dangerous thing when you're young and stupid. It didn't take long to find a tutorial online. The steps were easy. Download Tor, hide your IP, and boom, you're in. I remember the excitement, the adrenaline rush, as I navigated through those eerie, faceless marketplaces. It was like stepping into a different world, one where all the rules I knew didn't apply. But this wasn't some harmless adventure. This was the start of something dark. Something that would cost me everything. At first I just browsed, too scared to actually engage. The things I saw though, they were beyond fucked up. Drugs, weapons, stolen identities, hitmen for hire. Things you'd never believe existed. But they do. And I kept going back like a moth drawn to a flame. Not realising I was getting closer to burning everything down. One night... I stumbled onto a forum. It was different from the others, more sinister. People talked about things that sent chills down my spine. Rituals, sacrifices, human trafficking. And then I saw a thread that caught my eye. Want to play a game? Win big or lose everything? It was like something out of a movie. The post had thousands of views with people talking about the game like it was some twisted form of entertainment. The rules were simple. Do what they ask and you get money. But if you failed... Well, no one really knew what happened to the losers. Without thinking, I signed up. I know it sounds crazy, but I was just a dumb kid looking for a thrill. The first task was harmless enough. Post a picture of a random street at midnight. Easy. I did it, and within minutes I got $500 in Bitcoin. That's where it all began. The task started getting weird after that. I had to go to places I'd never been, take pictures of people without them knowing, Record strange sounds in the middle of the night. It was creepy, sure, but nothing I couldn't handle. The money kept coming, and I was hooked. But then, they asked for something different. They wanted me to prank call someone. Not just any prank call, though. I had to make it sound real, like I was threatening their life. I was hesitant, but they offered $5,000. That's a lot of money for a 15-year-old. I thought about all the things I could buy, all the stuff I could do, and I caved. I didn't know the person. The website gave me their number, told me what to say. My hands were shaking as I dialed, my heart pounding in my chest. When the guy picked up, I started talking. I could hear the fear in his voice as I described in detail how I'd hurt him, how I knew where he lived, how he couldn't run from me. I was shaking so badly I almost dropped the phone. After what felt like forever, I hung up. I felt sick, like I'd done something horrible, but I couldn't stop. The money showed up in my account moments later, and I tried to convince myself it wasn't real. That guy was probably fine, right? It was just a prank. A twisted, fucked up prank. The next task was the one that changed everything. They wanted me to send a package. Just a small, innocuous looking box to an address they provided. I didn't think much of it. The address was a P.O. box a few states away, and they assured me it was just part of the game. I didn't even open the box, just packed it up and shipped it off. Easy money, or so I thought. A week later, everything started to fall apart. My mum got a phone call. I didn't know who it was at the time, but I could see the fear on her face. She tried to hide it, but I could tell something was wrong. She wouldn't tell me anything, just kept saying it was nothing, but she was lying. I could feel it in the air like a storm was coming. Then the letters started arriving. They were addressed to me, but she intercepted them. I saw one by accident. It was just a piece of paper with a single sentence. You shouldn't have done that. I tried to ask her about it, but she brushed it off, told me it was just junk mail. But she was terrified. I could see it in her eyes. Things got worse after that. Strange cars started parking outside our house. 
people I didn't recognise. My mum wouldn't let me leave the house without her, and she kept the windows covered all the time. She was scared. Scared like I'd never seen her before. And I knew, deep down, that it was all because of me. One night, I heard her on the phone, whispering in the kitchen. I crept down the stairs, trying to hear what she was saying. The conversation was short, but I caught enough to know she was talking about me, about something I'd done. She sounded desperate, begging whoever was on the other end for help. My stomach turned as I realised this wasn't a game anymore. This was real. A few days later, she disappeared. I woke up and she was gone. No note, no explanation. Just gone. I called the police, but they didn't take it seriously. They said she probably just needed a break, that she'd come back when she was ready. But I knew better. I knew something had happened to her because of me. I went back to the dark web, back to that forum, desperate for answers. But the thread was gone, like it had never existed. I searched everywhere, tried to find the people I'd been talking to, but it was like they'd vanished. The Bitcoin was still in my account, but it felt like blood money. Days turned into weeks, and there was still no sign of her. I was losing my mind, barely eating, barely sleeping. Every time the phone rang, my heart would leap into my throat, but it was never her. I was alone in that house, surrounded by the reminders of how badly I'd fucked up. Then, one night, the doorbell rang. I rushed to the door, hoping, praying it was her, but when I opened it, there was no one there, just a small package on the doorstep. My hands trembled as I picked it up, my heart racing. I didn't want to open it. I knew, deep down, that whatever was inside would change everything, but I couldn't stop myself. Inside the package was a single Polaroid photo. It was my mom, tied to a chair, blindfolded. She looked terrified, her face pale, her hair matted. There was a note attached to the photo, written in the same handwriting as the letter I'd seen before. This is your fault. You shouldn't have played the game. I dropped the photo, my hands shaking so badly I could barely stand. I felt like I was going to be sick, my mind racing with a thousand thoughts. What had I done? What had I gotten her into? And how the hell was I going to fix it? But the truth was, there was no fixing it. I had opened a door I couldn't close and now my mum was paying the price. I didn't know what to do, who to turn to. The police wouldn't believe me, and I couldn't go back to the dark web. I was trapped, alone, with the knowledge that my stupidity had ruined everything. I didn't sleep at all after I found that Polaroid. I just sat there, staring at it, my mind spinning with terror and guilt. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw my mum's face, pale, terrified, bound to that chair. I knew I needed to do something, but... I had no idea where to start. I was just a kid, a stupid kid who thought he could mess around on the dark web and get away with it. Now, my mum was paying the price and it was all my fault. The next morning, I decided to skip school. I couldn't focus on anything else, and I didn't want to be around anyone. I spent the day locked in my room, trying to piece together what had happened. I went through every forum, every message board, every link I could remember visiting, but it was like they'd all been wiped clean. There was no trace of the game, no record of the tasks I'd completed. It was as if the people behind it had vanished into thin air, leaving me with nothing but that damn photo. I kept hearing sounds in the house, creaks, footsteps, doors opening and closing. I knew it was just my imagination, my nerves playing tricks on me, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. Every little noise made me jump, every shadow seemed to hold something sinister. I started to wonder if they were watching me, if they were waiting for the right moment to come after me too. That night, I made the decision to go to the police again, but this time, I wasn't going to be dismissed. I took the Polaroid with me, hoping it would be enough to make them listen. I felt like I was going to throw up the whole way there, my heart pounding in my chest, my hands slick with sweat. When I finally got to the station, I could barely speak. The officer behind the desk gave me a strange look, like he didn't know whether to take me seriously or not. I handed him the photo, my hands shaking so badly that I almost dropped it. He looked at it, his expression shifting from confusion to something else, something like concern or maybe disbelief. He told me to wait there while he got someone else, and then he disappeared into the back. I sat there, feeling like my whole world was collapsing around me. After what felt like hours, two detectives came out to talk to me. They asked me a lot of questions, 
where I found the photo, who I thought was responsible, what I knew about the dark web. I tried to tell them everything without sounding like a complete idiot, but it was hard. I was scared, and I could tell they were sceptical. They took the photo, said they'd look into it, but I could see it in their eyes. They didn't really believe me. To them, I was just some scared kid with a wild imagination. When I got home, I was greeted by silence. The house felt emptier than ever, the shadows longer, the darkness deeper. I kept expecting my mum to walk through the door, to tell me this was all some horrible nightmare. But she never came. I was alone, completely and utterly alone, with nothing but my guilt and fear to keep me company. That night, I couldn't stop thinking about the photo. I kept it hidden in my room, away from prying eyes. But it was like it had a life of its own, like it was calling to me, reminding me of what I'd done. I knew I couldn't just sit around and wait for the police to figure it out. They didn't even seem to take it seriously. I had to do something, even if it meant diving deeper into the nightmare I'd created. I logged back onto the dark web, my hands trembling as I navigated through the familiar ominous pages. I wasn't sure what I was looking for, but I knew I had to find some way to contact the people behind the game. I scoured every corner of the dark web I could access, looking for any trace of the forum, any clue that could lead me back to them. But it was like they disappeared completely. After hours of searching, I found something, a message in one of the few forums I hadn't checked before. It was short, just a few words, but it sent a chill down my spine. You're not looking hard enough. I stared at the screen, my heart racing. How did they know I was looking? Were they watching me? I couldn't stop the panic from rising in my chest, but I forced myself to keep going. I had to find them. I had to fix this. I followed the trail of messages, each one more cryptic than the last. They led me deeper into the dark web, into places I'd never been before. The things I saw, they were beyond disturbing. Videos of people being tortured, websites dedicated to the most twisted, depraved things you could imagine. It was like I was descending into hell, and with each step I knew I was getting closer to the people who had taken my mum. Finally, I found it. The new forum. It was different from the one I'd been on before, but the vibe was the same. Dark. Sinister filled with people who seemed to thrive on the suffering of others. I felt sick just reading through the posts, but I knew I had to keep going. I found a thread that seemed to be related to the game, people talking about tasks, rewards, punishments. My heart sank as I realised that there were more people playing this twisted game, more victims like me. I posted in the thread, begging for help, asking them to let my mum go. I didn't care about the money anymore, I didn't care about anything but getting her back. I was desperate, and I didn't care who knew it. I just needed to fix this. The reply came almost immediately. You think this is a game? You think you can just quit? You're in too deep, kid. You'll never get out. The words felt like a punch to the gut. I knew they were right. I had no control anymore. I'd given myself over to something I didn't understand, something that had its claws deep in me. And now, they had my mum. The days that followed were a blur of terror and regret. I didn't leave the house, didn't talk to anyone. I was constantly checking the dark web, hoping for some sign, some clue that would lead me to her. But there was nothing, just silence, and the occasional taunting message from the people who were holding her. And then, the packages started arriving. The first one was small, like the one with the Polaroid, but this time, there was no photo. Inside was a piece of my mum's jewellery, a necklace she always wore, something my dad had given her years ago. Seeing it made my blood run cold. I knew they were trying to break me, to make me understand that they could do whatever they wanted, and it was working. I felt like I was losing my mind, like I was trapped in a nightmare I couldn't wake up from. The second package was worse. It contained a lock of her hair tied with a ribbon. I almost threw up when I saw it, the reality of what was happening crashing down on me. They were torturing her, taking pieces of her bit by bit and sending them to me as a reminder of how helpless I was. I didn't know what to do, where to turn. The police were no help, the dark web was a dead end, and I was running out of time. I started getting phone calls after that. At first they were just heavy breathing on the other end, nothing more. But then they started talking. The voice was distorted, like they were using some kind of software to hide their identity. But the words were clear. You'll never find her. She's ours now. And soon you will be too. I was spiralling, losing my grip on reality. I couldn't eat, couldn't sleep couldn't think straight. 
All I could do was sit there, waiting for the next package, the next message, the next piece of evidence that my mum was slipping further and further away from me. I knew they were trying to push me to the brink to see how far they could break me. And it was working. The final package was the worst. It arrived late one night, left on my doorstep like the others. But this one was different. It was heavier, wrapped in layers of tape, almost like they were trying to keep whatever was inside from escaping. My hands were shaking so badly I could barely open it, my mind racing with all the horrible possibilities. Inside was a videotape, an old worn VHS tape with no label, no markings. I didn't want to watch it. I knew, deep down, that whatever was on that tape would destroy me. But I had no choice. I needed to know. I needed to see what they had done. I hooked up the old VCR, popped the tape in and hit play. The screen flickered to life, static filling the room, and then the image appeared. It was my mum, sitting in that same chair, tied up, blindfolded. But this time, there were people around her, masked, faceless figures, their voices low and menacing. They were taunting her, telling her that it was my fault, that I had brought this upon her, and then they started to hurt her. I won't go into details, it's too much, even now, but the things they did, they were beyond anything I could have imagined. They wanted me to see, to know what I had caused, to understand that there was no escape from the hell I had unleashed. I sat there, frozen, as the tape played out, the sounds of her screams echoing in my mind long after the screen went dark. When it was over, I just sat there, staring at the blank screen. I didn't cry, I didn't scream, I was numb, hollowed out by the horror of what I had seen. I knew then that I had lost her. They had taken my mum away, and it was all because of me, and the worst part, I knew they weren't done with me yet. After watching that tape, I wasn't the same. I couldn't be. It was like something inside me had snapped, leaving behind an empty shell of who I used to be. I didn't know what to do, who to turn to. I was trapped in a nightmare of my own making, and there was no way out. The guilt, the fear. It was all consuming, like a weight pressing down on my chest, making it hard to breathe, to think, to exist. I stopped going to school. I couldn't face people, couldn't pretend like everything was normal when my world had been torn apart. I barely left my room, and when I did, it was only to check the front door to see if another package had arrived. Every time I heard a car outside or the creak of footsteps on the porch, my heart would leap into my throat, but there was never anything there. Just the silence and the crushing realisation that my mum was gone, and I was the one who had pushed her into the abyss. The police hadn't called me back since that day at the station. I tried following up with them, but all I got were empty reassurances that they were looking into it, or that these things take time. I could tell they weren't taking it seriously, just a missing persons case in a world full of them. But this wasn't just any case. They didn't know what I knew, didn't understand the darkness I'd unleashed. One night, after days of sitting in the dark, staring at the blank walls of my room, I decided I couldn't just wait anymore. I had to take action, no matter how reckless it might be. I needed to find out where they had taken her, and the only way I could think of was to dive back into the very thing that had started it all, the dark web. I had to get answers, no matter the cost. I set up my computer again, my hands trembling as I navigated back into that hellish world. The forums were just as I remembered. Dark, foreboding, filled with the kinds of people who thrived on pain and suffering. I avoided the threads where people discussed their twisted hobbies and focused on finding anything related to the game. But everything was buried, hidden deep within layers of anonymity and encryption. I was lost, fumbling in the dark for a light that didn't exist. Then, out of nowhere, I received a private message. The username was just a string of random characters, nothing identifiable. My heart pounded as I opened it, half expecting it to be another taunt, another reminder of my failures. But what I found was even more chilling. You want your mum back? You know what you have to do. That was it. No instructions, no clues, just that single, ominous sentence. My mind raced with possibilities, each one more horrifying than the last. I knew they were trying to pull me deeper into their game, to break me even further. But I didn't care. I was beyond caring at that point. If playing along meant getting her back, then I'd do it. 
no matter how twisted or dangerous it might be. I replied, my hands shaking as I typed out the words, what do you want me to do? The response was almost immediate as if they had been waiting for me. Meet us where it all began. Midnight, come alone, where it all began. The words echoed in my head, but I knew what they meant. The place where I'd sent that first package, the one that had started this whole nightmare. It was a small, run-down post office in a town a few hours away, a place I'd never been to before, but one I'd never forget. I didn't know what they wanted from me, what they were planning, but I had no choice. I had to go. The drive there was a blur, the roads twisting and turning through the darkness like some endless maze. I couldn't stop my mind from racing, imagining all the horrible things that could happen when I got there. Were they going to kill me? Was this some elaborate trap to lure me into their grasp? I didn't have any answers, just a gnawing dread that grew with every passing mile. I arrived just before midnight, the town as quiet as a graveyard. The post office was an old, decrepit building on the edge of town, barely lit by a flickering streetlight. I parked the car and sat there for a moment, trying to steady my nerves, but it was no use. The fear was too strong, too overwhelming. But I couldn't back out now. I had come this far, and there was no turning back. I got out of the car and walked towards the building, my footsteps echoing in the empty street. The air was cold, biting, as if the very night itself was trying to keep me away. But I pushed forward, my mind set on one thing, finding my mom and getting her back, no matter what it took. The door to the post office creaked open with a sound that made my skin crawl. Inside it was dark, the only light coming from the faint glow of a few scattered candles. The place was empty, abandoned, the kind of place where bad things happened, where people disappeared without a trace. I stood there, my breath coming in short, shallow gasps, waiting for something, anything, to happen. And then, I heard it. A faint shuffling sound coming from the back of the building. I tensed up, every instinct telling me to run, to get the hell out of there. But I couldn't. I had to see this through. I followed the sound, my heart pounding so hard I thought it might burst out of my chest. I rounded a corner and stopped dead in my tracks. There, in the dim light, was a figure. Tall, thin, dressed in black, their face obscured by a hood. They stood perfectly still, like a statue. Their head tilted slightly as if they were waiting for me. My mouth went dry, my hands clenched into fists as I took a step forward. Where is she? I managed to choke out. My voice barely more than a whisper. The figure didn't move, didn't speak. They just stood there watching me. I felt a surge of anger, of desperation, bubbling up inside me. I took another step, my voice growing louder, more frantic. Where's my mom? The figure finally moved, raising a hand and pointing to something behind me. I turned, my stomach lurching with fear. There in the shadows was another figure, smaller, hunched over. It was my mum. She was tied to a chair, her head slumped forward, her hair matted and dirty. She looked so fragile, so broken, and it was all because of me. I rushed over to her, dropping to my knees, my hands fumbling with the ropes that bound her. She was barely conscious, her breathing shallow, her skin cold to the touch. I could feel tears streaming down my face as I whispered her name, begging her to wake up, to say something, anything. But she didn't respond. She was like a doll, lifeless, empty. The figure behind me finally spoke, their voice low, distorted like they were speaking through a voice changer. You shouldn't have come here. I looked up, my vision blurred with tears, my heart pounding in my chest. Please, I begged, my voice cracking. Just let us go, I'll do anything, just let her go. The figure stepped closer, their presence looming over me like a shadow. This isn't about you anymore, they said, their voice cold, devoid of any emotion. She's ours now. I felt a wave of panic wash over me my mind racing with thoughts of what they might do to her. No, I whispered, shaking my head. No, you can't do this. I'll... You'll do nothing. The figure cut me off, their voice sharp, final. You were warned and you didn't listen. Now she pays the price. Before I could react, something hit me from behind. A sharp, searing pain that shot through my body, sending me sprawling to the floor. My vision blurred, the world spinning around me as I struggled to stay conscious. I could hear them laughing, 
a cold, cruel sound that echoed in the darkness. I tried to move, to crawl towards my mom, but my body wouldn't respond. The pain was too much, too overwhelming. All I could do was lie there, helpless, as they took her away. I heard her moan softly as they lifted her out of the chair, dragging her towards the back of the building. I wanted to scream, to fight, to do something, but I couldn't. I was powerless, paralysed by the agony coursing through my veins. As they disappeared into the shadows, I heard one final chilling message. This isn't over. We'll be seeing you again. And then everything went black. When I woke up, I was lying on the cold, hard floor of the post office. The candles had burned out, leaving me in total darkness. My head throbbed, my body ached, but none of that mattered. They were gone. My mum was gone, and I had failed her. I was alone, completely and utterly alone, with nothing but the memory of that night to haunt me. I don't know how long I lay there, but eventually I forced myself to get up. I stumbled out of the building, barely able to stand, my vision swimming with tears. The car was still parked where I had left it the engine cold. I got in, my hands shaking so badly I could barely grip the steering wheel. I drove home in a daze, the world around me a blur of darkness and shadows. When I got back, the house was just as empty as I had left it. The silence was deafening, oppressive. I collapsed on the couch, too exhausted to move, too broken to care. I didn't sleep that night. I just sat there, staring at the walls, my mind replaying the events over and over again, torturing myself with the knowledge that I had lost her for good. But deep down, I knew this wasn't the end. They had taken her, but they weren't finished with me. I could feel it in my bones, a gnawing dread that wouldn't go away. They were out there, watching, waiting for the right moment to strike again. And when they did, I knew it would be worse than anything I had experienced so far. The days that followed were a blur of fear and paranoia. Every creak of the house, Every shadow in the corner of my eye made my heart race. I couldn't escape the feeling that they were still watching me, waiting for the perfect moment to strike again. The worst part was knowing that I had no one left to turn to. The police didn't believe me, my friends wouldn't understand, and my mum, well, my mum was gone, taken by the very people I'd dragged into our lives. I barely left the house. The fear kept me trapped inside, too scared to even step onto the porch. The blinds stayed shut, the doors locked, and I spent most of my time pacing the living room, waiting for something to happen. I was a prisoner in my own home, held captive by the knowledge that I'd brought this all on myself. The guilt was suffocating. Every time I closed my eyes I saw my mum's face, her expression twisted in fear and pain as they took her away. I couldn't stop thinking about what they were doing to her, how she was suffering because of me. It was like a constant weight pressing down on my chest, making it hard to breathe, to think, to even exist. Then the nightmares started. They weren't like normal nightmares. They were vivid, too real, like I was living through them instead of just dreaming. Every night, I'd find myself back in that post office, watching as they tortured her, their laughter echoing in the darkness. I'd wake up in a cold sweat, my heart racing, my body trembling with fear. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't shake the images from my mind. They haunted me, day and night, a constant reminder of what I'd done. I knew I couldn't keep living like this, something had to give, but I was too scared to do anything, too terrified of making things worse. I thought about going back to the dark web, trying to find them again, but the thought of facing them after what happened at the post office made my blood run cold. I was trapped in a vicious cycle of fear and guilt, unable to move forward, unable to go back, and then... One night, they came back. It was late, well past midnight, and I was lying in bed staring at the ceiling, my mind too full of fear and regret to sleep. The house was eerily quiet, the kind of silence that makes your skin crawl. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong, that something terrible was about to happen. I tried to tell myself it was just my imagination, just the stress getting to me, but deep down, I knew it wasn't. The first sign that something was off was the faint sound of footsteps outside my window. My heart skipped a beat, my body tensing as I listened, straining to hear over the pounding of my own heartbeat. The footsteps were slow, deliberate, like whoever it was knew exactly what they were doing, like they were toying with me. 
I forced myself to sit up, my eyes locked on the window. The curtains were drawn, but I could see the faint outline of someone standing just outside, barely visible in the dim light. My breath caught in my throat as I watched, frozen in place by a mix of fear and dread. Whoever it was, they weren't moving. They were just standing there, watching, waiting. For a moment I considered calling the police, but I knew it was pointless. They wouldn't believe me, wouldn't take me seriously. I was on my own, just like I had been since this nightmare started. The thought sent a wave of panic through me, but I forced myself to stay calm. I had to be smart about this. I couldn't let them win. I slowly got out of bed, my movements as quiet as I could make them. I didn't want to draw attention, didn't want them to know I was awake. My heart was pounding in my chest, my hands slick with sweat as I grabbed the baseball bat I kept by my bed. It wasn't much, but it was better than nothing. I wasn't going to let them take me without a fight. As I crept towards the window, the figure outside finally moved. They stepped closer, their face still hidden in the shadows, but I could see the outline of their body, tall, thin, dressed in dark clothing. My stomach twisted with fear as I realised who it was. It was one of them. They had found me. I stopped just short of the window, my grip tightening on the bat. I knew I had to do something, but I was too scared to act. My mind was racing, a thousand thoughts and scenarios playing out all at once, but none of them ended well. I could feel the fear rising in my chest, threatening to overwhelm me, but I couldn't afford to lose control. Not now. The figure outside raised a hand, placing it against the glass. The sound was soft, almost gentle, but it sent a chill down my spine. They were taunting me, trying to break me just like they had before. But I wasn't going to let them, not this time. I took a deep breath, steadying myself, and then, without warning, I yanked the curtains open. The figure outside didn't flinch, didn't move. They just stood there, staring at me through the glass. I could see their face now, partially hidden by a mask, an expressionless, emotionless mask that covered everything but their eyes. Those eyes, they were cold, empty, like they were staring straight into my soul. For a moment, neither of us moved. We just stared at each other, the tension between us thick and suffocating. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest, my breath coming in short, shallow gasps. I knew I should do something, anything, but I was paralysed by fear, unable to think, unable to act. And then they spoke. The voice that came from behind the mask was distorted, mechanical, like it was being filtered through some kind of voice changer. It was the same voice I had heard that night at the post office, the same voice that had haunted my nightmares. You didn't think we'd forget about you, did you? I felt a surge of panic, my grip tightening on the bat. What do you want? I managed to choke out, my voice barely more than a whisper. The figure tilted their head slightly as if considering my question. You have something that belongs to us, they said, their tone calm, almost casual, and we're here to collect. I swallowed hard, my mind racing. What could they possibly want from me? I had nothing, nothing but the guilt and fear that had consumed me since this nightmare began. I don't have anything, I said, trying to keep the fear out of my voice. You've already taken everything. The figure didn't respond right away. They just stood there, watching me, those cold, empty eyes boring into me. Finally, they spoke again, their voice low and menacing. You're wrong. There's one more thing you can give us. Before I could react, they moved, their hand reaching into their coat. I tensed up, expecting a weapon, but instead they pulled out a small, unmarked envelope. They held it up to the glass, their gaze never leaving mine. Open it, they said, their tone leaving no room for argument. My hands were shaking as I reached for the envelope, my mind screaming at me to run to get the hell out of there. But I knew I had no choice. I took the envelope from them, my fingers trembling as I tore it open. Inside was a single sheet of paper, folded neatly in half. I unfolded it, my heart sinking as I read the words written there in neat, precise handwriting. Your life for hers, meet us tomorrow night, same place. I felt the world spin around me, the ground dropping out from under my feet. They were giving me an ultimatum, a choice that wasn't really a choice at all. I could give myself up, sacrifice my own life, in exchange for hers. It was the only way to save her, the only way to make up for the hell I'd put her through. But I knew, deep down, 
that it was a trap. They had no intention of letting either of us go. I looked up at the figure, my vision blurred with tears. Why? I whispered, my voice breaking. Why are you doing this? The figure tilted their head again, as if amused by my question. Because we can, they said simply. Because you played our game, and now it's time to pay the price. With that, they turned and walked away, disappearing into the shadows as quickly as they had appeared. I was left standing there, the envelope clutched in my hand, my mind racing with a thousand thoughts, none of them good. I knew what I had to do, but the thought of it made me sick to my stomach. The next day was the longest of my life. Every minute felt like an eternity, every second a reminder of the choice I had to make. I couldn't eat, couldn't sleep, couldn't think straight. All I could do was wait, the fear and dread gnawing at me, tearing me apart from the inside out. As night fell, I knew there was no turning back. I had made my decision, and now I had to follow through. I got into my car, the envelope clutched in my hand, and drove to the post office one last time. The streets were empty, the town as silent as a graveyard. It felt like I was driving to my own execution. When I arrived, the building was just as I remembered. Dark. Abandoned. The perfect place for something terrible to happen. I parked the car and got out, my heart pounding in my chest, my hands slick with sweat. I knew what I had to do, but the fear was almost overwhelming. I walked towards the building, the envelope crumpled in my hand, my footsteps echoing in the empty night. The door was already open, just as it had been before, but this time there was no light inside, just darkness, thick and oppressive, like it was waiting to swallow me whole. I stepped inside, my breath catching in my throat as I looked around. The building was empty, silent, but I could feel their presence lurking in the shadows waiting for me to make the next move. My heart pounded in my chest, my mind racing with fear and regret, but I couldn't turn back now. I'd come this far, and there was no going back. Okay, I called out, my voice trembling. I'm here, just let her go. There was no response, no movement, just the silence pressing down on me, suffocating me. I took a step forward, my hand tightening around the bat, ready for whatever was coming next. And then, out of the darkness, I heard it. The sound of my mum's voice, faint, weak, but unmistakable. Please, she whispered, her voice trembling with fear. Please don't do this. I froze, my heart lurching in my chest. She was here. They had her, just as they had promised. But I knew, deep down, that this was all part of their plan. They wanted to break me, to push me to the edge, to see how far I would go. And I was about to find out. The sound of my mum's voice cut through the darkness like a knife, and for a moment I felt a flicker of hope. She was here, alive, and I had a chance to save her. But that hope was quickly drowned out by the overwhelming dread that had been gnawing at me since this nightmare began. I knew this was a trap, that they were using her to lure me in, but what choice did I have? I couldn't leave her to suffer because of my mistakes. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for what was to come, and stepped further into the darkness. The post office was eerily quiet, the silence pressing in on me from all sides. My footsteps echoed off the walls as I moved slowly, cautiously, towards the back of the building where her voice had come from. My heart pounded in my chest each beat a reminder of how badly I had fucked up. As I reached the back room, I saw her. She was tied to a chair, just like before, her face pale and gaunt, her eyes wide with fear. The sight of her like that nearly broke me. This was my mum, the woman who had raised me, who had loved me unconditionally, and now she was here, suffering because of the terrible choices I had made. I rushed to her side, dropping the bat as I fumbled to untie the ropes that bound her. My hands were shaking so badly I could barely get a grip, but I forced myself to stay focused. It's okay, Mom, I whispered, my voice thick with emotion. I'm here. I'm going to get you out of this. But she didn't respond. She just stared at me with those wide, terrified eyes, like she didn't recognize me. My stomach twisted with guilt and fear, but I pushed it down, concentrating on freeing her. I had to stay strong, I had to believe that I could fix this. As I worked to untie her, I became painfully aware of the fact that we weren't alone. I could feel them, those faceless figures, watching us from the shadows, waiting for the right moment to strike. 
my hands moved faster, driven by a mix of fear and desperation. I knew time was running out. Finally, the last of the ropes fell away and I helped her to her feet. She was weak, barely able to stand, but I held her up, guiding her towards the exit. We're almost there, I whispered, trying to reassure her as much as myself. Just a little further and we'll be safe. But as we neared the door, they stepped out of the shadows. There were three of them, dressed in black, their faces hidden behind those same emotionless masks. They blocked our path, standing between us and the only way out. My heart raced as I realised there was no escape. We were trapped, cornered, and there was nothing I could do. I stood there, holding my mum close, my mind racing for a solution. But I couldn't think of anything. They had us right where they wanted us, and they knew it. One of them stepped forward, raising a gloved hand to point directly at me. It's time to pay the price, the figure said, their voice cold and mechanical. You thought you could play our game and get away with it? You were wrong. I felt my blood run cold. I knew what they wanted, what they had been planning from the start. This wasn't about the money, or the tasks, or even my mom. This was about me, about making me suffer for daring to challenge them. And now, they were going to make sure I paid the ultimate price. I tightened my grip on my mom, trying to shield her from them, but I knew it was pointless. They were in control, and there was nothing I could do to stop them. Please, I begged, my voice trembling with fear. Just let her go. I'll do whatever you want, just don't hurt her. The figure tilted their head, as if considering my plea. You've already made your choice, they said. Now it's time to face the consequences. Before I could react, the other two figures grabbed me, pulling me away from my mum. I struggled, fought with everything I had, but they were too strong. They dragged me towards the centre of the room, forcing me to my knees. I felt a sharp, searing pain in my side as one of them kicked me, knocking the wind out of me. I gasped for breath, my vision blurring as I tried to stay conscious. Through the haze of pain and fear, I saw my mum being dragged back towards the chair. She was screaming now, pleading with them to let me go, but they ignored her. They tied her down again, securing her tightly to the chair as she thrashed and struggled. One of the figures knelt beside me, their masked face inches from mine. I could see my own reflection in the glossy surface of the mask, distorted, twisted. You want to save her? The figure whispered, their voice low and sinister. Then you know what you have to do. I stared at them, my mind reeling. What were they talking about? What did they want from me? But deep down, I knew. I had known all along. This was never about saving her. It was about breaking me, about pushing me to the edge and seeing if I would jump. Do it, the figure hissed, their voice filled with malice. Or she dies, and you'll live with that guilt for the rest of your pathetic life. I looked over at my mum, at the fear in her eyes, the way she was trembling in that chair. I knew I couldn't let her suffer any more because of me. I had to end this, no matter what the cost. With trembling hands, I reached out and grabbed the knife they had placed beside me. It was heavy, cold, the blade gleaming in the dim light. I could feel the weight of their gaze on me, the pressure of their expectations. This was the moment they had been waiting for, the culmination of their sick game. I stood up, my legs unsteady, my heart pounding in my chest. My mum was sobbing now, begging me not to do it, but I couldn't listen. I couldn't let her suffer any longer. I had to end this. I had to make it stop. I took a deep breath, steadying myself, and then I plunged the knife into my own chest. The pain was immediate, overwhelming, like nothing I had ever felt before. I gasped, my body convulsing as the blade sank deep into my flesh. Blood poured from the wound, hot and thick, staining my clothes, pooling on the floor beneath me. I could feel my strength leaving me, my vision dimming as I collapsed to the ground. But through the haze of pain and darkness I saw them, those faceless figures standing over me, watching as I bled out. I had given them what they wanted, made the ultimate sacrifice. But I knew, even as the life drained from my body, that it wouldn't be enough. They were monsters, and they would never be satisfied. The last thing I saw before the darkness took me was my mum, still tied to that chair. Her screams echoing in my ears as everything went black. And then, there was nothing. They found me the next morning, lying in a pool of my own blood, the knife still clutched in my hand. My mum was gone, taken by the monsters I had unleashed. 
The police couldn't explain it. There were no signs of forced entry, no evidence of anyone else being there. It was as if I had done it all myself, a tragic end to a disturbed young man who had lost his mind. But I knew the truth. I knew what had really happened. And now, as I lie here, waiting for the darkness to claim me, I can only hope that my story serves as a warning. The dark web is not a game. It's a nightmare, one that will consume you if you let it. And if you're not careful, it might just take everything you love away from you, just like it did to me.